Welcome. This is a leadership on how to have successful virtual meetings and events. This is intended for student leaders of Rutgers University organizations. This will be presented by Samantha DeMaris, who's a graduate intern in the Student Involvement Office for Student Centers and Activities. Karen Artizone, the Associate Director of Student Involvement, helped prepare this presentation. So just to review the agenda, we will introduce the host, which we just did, and then we typically would have a check-in process where you would click a link in the chat to check in on Get Involved. We will cover Get Involved later in this presentation, but because we are doing a video, there is no check-in process. We will then go through virtual meetings and how to prepare, how to host, and what to do after events meetings, and then the same thing will be done for virtual events in terms of preparation, event time, post-event, and then additional resources. So typically, if we were on a live Zoom call, we would do a Kahoot. So a Kahoot is something that is like a quiz game um, that you can do with your organization. So you could do this in a fun way that it's just get to know you questions, goofy questions to kind of lighten the mood. So in my Kahoot that I would have had here, it would have had something asking about the difference if people like pancakes or waffles. Um, it might seem a little silly, but then there's also things on top of that that um, are informative. So we asked if you've been to a leader shop before, what class year you are, different things like that. You can also use this for educational purposes to ask people trivia questions and different things like that. So now to jump into virtual meetings. So meeting preparation. First, establish the purpose of a meeting. Purpose drives conversation. It is important to convene as an executive board to discuss what you need to get out of your meeting. Even if, as president, you are meeting with your executive team, determine the needs for the meeting. Is it just for general updates, brainstorming, delegation of tasks, to gain feedback, to solve a problem, or to make decisions? It can be a collection of those items as well. In a virtual setting, you need to prepare general logistics of your group. First, be sure to generate a Zoom meeting. Send this out to your organization ahead of time so they can easily join. I would even recommend inviting them all through their email so they can keep it on their calendar. This will remind them of the meeting. If you have a group chat or at your first meeting, discuss what times best work for the group going forward so that everyone can attend your meetings. Then identify the outcomes you want to accomplish in your meeting. Outcomes can consist of various things that you find in a purpose or an agenda. Overall, these are the main takeaway points. What do you want to be sure your members get out of the meeting? How will you be sure to get this, get this out of your meeting? This can be done in various ways, but outcomes will help you lead your meeting. This is also a great way for you to gauge your members at a later date to evaluate your success in getting your main points across. Finally, we recommend preparing an agenda. Given that you're not in a physical setting and all of your classes are virtual, it may be helpful to prepare a written outline of what you want to accomplish in your meeting. Sending out an agenda to your team may help them understand what, it is, what is to be covered as well as how they should prepare. Adding notes about what should be prepped like that on an agenda can help the meeting be more productive. Agendas also provide a way for people to follow along, which is a subtle way to keep them engaged. Also, as many as you know, it may be hard to focus on Zoom all the time. So if there is something for your members to look back to after the meeting, it will alleviate repeating repetitive information. So now there are various online platforms. I typically use Zoom, uh, but I will cover all the platforms so that you understand the different pros of all of them and you can choose what best works for your organization. So again, we recommend you using whatever you're most comfortable with, given that Rutgers provides various platforms for students. So this workshop would have been done on Zoom um, and is what we suggest for most student groups. Rutgers provides premium access, which means your meetings can be longer than 45 minutes if needed. Zoom has various features that can help your group too. First, in the setup process, you can enable muting features, video options, virtual backgrounds, and waiting room features. You can also do safety purposes of passwords, Rutgers um, authentication, which means that basically members have to be logged in with their Rutgers account on Zoom in order to enter your meeting. There is a rise in Zoom bombing, uh, so we really recommend taking these extra safety precautions when you're prepping the logistics of your meeting. So all of these features are options when setting up the meeting, but they can also help, they can all help depending on the need of your group. While in a Zoom meeting, it can also be helpful to use breakout rooms, as I'm sure you can understand in general interest meetings with new members or even with current members, communicating on a virtual call can be intimidating. Utilizing breakout rooms allows you to split up your meeting into smaller groups. This can allow discussion amongst members in your more intimate setting, and then you can bring it back to the main group. Also, you can ask your members to utilize reactions and the raise hand feature. This allows engagement without verbal communication to show signs of approval or concern. 
WebEx is also an option and probably something that you use predominantly in the spring um, since that was what was Rutgers that's the platform Rutgers was working most closely with originally. So this is an option and lets you host online meetings with HD video, audio, and screen sharing. It keeps your teams connected through messaging, file sharing, whiteboarding, and calling. Um, these are all features that you can get from different platforms like Zoom as well, but if you prefer WebEx, we totally recommend using it. And it is really helpful for large scale events um, as it has a lot of um, webinar style and um, large scale event hosting features. We also have been recommending executive teams especially to use Microsoft Teams. It's a platform provided to students through Rutgers through the Microsoft Office Suite. Teams is a great way, great resource for your organization or even your executive board. This platform allows you to send to have video calls, upload files, send chat messages, and more. This is a great way for your team to communicate while working and to keep things in one place. You also can use Google Meet as an option if you prefer. Google Meet performs similarly to Zoom for video call purposes, but using Google, there are less control features for the organizer. One recommendation we would you do while using Google, Google is using Google Calendar. If you want your organization to be up to date on your club's meetings and events, you can upload something to a calendar that's designated just for your organization, and then your members can add that calendar to their own calendar so that they're reminded and it automatically goes on their calendar the events that you all, all are having. Okay, so now it's meeting time. What do you need to know? So follow through with your agenda. If you provide an agenda, be sure to follow through so your members do not feel blindsided. That said, be sure to add more than just the agenda. An agenda provides bullet points, so be sure you give more to the group than information that you just said that you could have just sent through an email. Then utilize icebreakers. It is never the most comfortable and some may roll their eyes, but be sure to include some ways to engage members in a social setting. Without a physical space, members cannot engage casually before the meeting or after. The meeting space, even through, though it's virtual, is the sole space the members are engaging with one another as a group. Find ways to ask them about their days, weeks, and so on. Have members share interesting facts about themselves. You can also have members talk about their time in quarantine to share tips with others. Find ways for your members to talk about things other than the meeting, providing prompts to help students generate conversation too. Icebreaker information can be found in the Student Organization Virtual Toolkit that lists examples of possible virtual, virtual icebreakers. And now that said, be sure to engage your members. Find ways to do Find ways to do that with icebreakers, breakout rooms, games, social meetings, and more. Allow members to be as active as possible so they feel a part of the organization. Assign tasks to members so they can contribute at your next meeting. Engaging members in this space is, essentially, is essential for the success of a team. Engagement can also take place outside of the organization too through social media challenges and buddy systems. So now, inclusivity practices for virtual meetings. It is essential to bring about community even in a virtual setting. This entails an extra focus on being inclusive in your meetings. First, be sure to utilize screen names. This is a great place for your members to state their preferred name. If a member goes by a preferred name, they can put that here so everyone new and current members are reminded of that. This also helps people get to know faces and names. Another aspect of screen names is the ability to add identified pronouns. You should have all members share their pronouns at your first meeting, but if going forward it is in their screen name, it allows others to be conscious and respectful of how others identify. Similarly, urge members to upload a profile picture so their video does not work, so if their video does not work or they have to step away, you can still see a face with the caller. In the first meeting, it is important to establish meeting etiquette. This can be done by creating a document that is a list of rules created by your members on how to act and participate in virtual settings. Establishing these standards early on allows members to feel that their input is included while also understanding how to engage properly for the efficient and successful meetings. These rules and guidelines should be determined by your group, but it should be a consensus. Items should include using the raise hand feature to talk, be sure to use, be sh being sure to put yourself on mute when you start, utilizing the chat to ask questions, and being respectful of people sharing. Speaking of respect, be sure to be an active listener. Promote active listening amongst your organization. This demonstrates your respect for one another as well as creates a community against, amongst your peers. Actively listening to one another generates new ideas and can show others how you value them. This also has to do with being present. If someone is talking, do not look away to your phone. Engaging by nodding, using reactions, smiling at comments are just some ways of showing you are listening, which will mean a lot to your members so they listen to you as well. Like we said earlier, providing an agenda or even activating closed caption features can make their, the information more accessible for students for reading purposes. The closed caption feature can be utilized can be utilized if you are able to. So you need to assign an officer to be in charge of the closed captions to type up what is being said during the meeting. 
Furthermore, go into your meetings open-minded about your members' current situation. Be understanding that the pandemic is not easy on anyone, so empathy is a must. You also may not know what situation your members are in, whether that involves technology issues, home instability, distractions, and more. Be an ear for your members and show them empathy during this time. If you are understanding of them, they will feel valued and contribute more. Everyone has unique ideas, backgrounds, experiences, and so forth. So be sure you are open-minded when others share, while also utilizing the skills and knowledge others can bring to your group. All of your efforts given this unique time should be to make your members feel valued and important. Virtual settings are different for everyone, so it is important to include everyone in your group. On the screen is also a ex picture example of what it looks like to add your preferred name and your screen names and a profile picture. Um, this can all be done through the settings of whichever platform you're using. Okay, so post-meeting. So you've done everything we've said above, so now what? So during the meeting, we should have mentioned this before, but we do recommend meeting minutes. So make sure someone is keeping track of everything that is said, similar to that closed caption feature, feature but just in a Word document. Um, after the meeting is completed, have a place where the minutes can be uploaded and filed. Keeping this in one place will allow you to look back to prepare for future meetings and to also provide future executive boards with information on how to do things going forward. Then send a follow-up email to your members that include words of praise, reminders of deadlines and events, and some important notes to take away from meetings. Also, those meeting minutes could be helpful for those who may have missed the meeting. Utilize your group chats. If you have a group chat, update members periodically in your chat, shout out members or recognize birthdays, engage members outside of the video call. After all is said and done, find a time to reconvene with your executive board. Discuss how the meeting went and what needs to be accomplished between now and the next meeting. And then at the next meeting, talk about what went well and what did not, and consider what you can do better for next time. Okay, success. You've done a, a successful virtual meeting. So typically we would have had an engagement poll here, so we also recommend that you could do this with your organization. So the engagement poll we were using was Poll Everywhere. Um, so this would allow you to have your members type in on the computer or text in responses to questions. So this could be polls, this could be open-ended questions, it could be those word bubbles where it kind of takes like one word that everyone said and makes it a collage, um, various things like that. So Poll Everywhere is a really great feature if you want people to give anonymous feedback during your presentation or meeting. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to virtual events. So prepare for your virtual events. So similar to meetings, you should prepare aspects of an agenda, such as what you hope to get out of the event and provide to those attending a list of things they need to do or have for the event to work from home. Prepare anything else you need for the event as, they, as the host too. This includes a virtual platform meeting link like Zoom, a get involved event submission, tasks assigned to current members to assist the event, purchase of any supplies needed, and anything else you can think of that you would typically need for an in-person event. Given the concerns of budget this semester and the SABO office being remote, contact your advisor if you make any purchases in order to be sure it per purchase, make sure it processes currently. We want you to be creative and be reimbursed for your purchases. So contacting your advisor will make sure that process goes smoothly. Some notes, stable processing will take longer now that they are not in the office and telecommuting. There will be no cash advances, no purchases regarding food or travel will be approved this semester either. There also will also be a new swag portal for the university and student involvement will be sent out, will send out information soon. This portal will enable your organization to purchase promotional items, swag, and t-shirts from one single vendor. Please note that the funds you receive from RUSA cannot be used this semester for swag, but if the organization has generated revenue, it can be used. We will also be having a future leader shop on a swag portal demo so that you all can see what it's like, so be on the lookout for that on October 20th. Also, contracts will be done very similar to previous years, so if you're having student organizations need to process this form, um, to take but it will take significant amounts of time. So we ask that you begin the process four weeks in advance. Um, there is still the contract checklist, so be sure that you're doing the normal process that you would be for purchases with a contract, and talk to your advisor ASAP if you have further questions. Be sure you advertise your event. Make graphics using Canva, which is free. Make your graphics Making graphics and advertising your events on social media and on your members' social media can attract others to your events. If you would like more marketing tips, be on the lookout for a YouTube video coming soon on marketing and social media strategies. Also, find ways to engage members from home. Even though this is a virtual event, have them engage with a game, with a team, have them move around, try to be creative in any way you can. So you want individuals to take part in your event and have fun and engaged and be engaged. 
Also, just a side note in terms of SIBO that I was mentioning for the contracts, processing of SIBO will take 15 to 20 business days due to them telecommuting. So just keep that in mind when you're waiting for reimbursement checks. Okay, so get involved. So this has been mentioned a couple of times, but we just want to go over it um, to be a little clearer about what you need to do on get involved. So be sure to update your organization's profile so it has photos and information about your organization. If an individual missed you at the involvement fair, this is a great way for them to see what you all are doing for the semester. A few notes. First years are told that Get Involved is the place to go in order to get involved on campus. So you utilizing it will help first years see what you all are up to. Create events on Get Involved. The site is very, relatively straightforward, but the image on the on the top shows what the main page site of events looks like. You want your events there to gain new members. This also allows all students to find your events accessible. This will allow you them to RSVP and you can ask various questions pre or post event. This can give you information on who's attending as well as gaining feedback about your event. We actually recommend that you upload your meetings on Get Involved as well, so general interest meetings, etc., so that members, so potential members can scroll through the event page and find them as well. There are no flyers this semester on a campus, so this is probably a really great resource um, to advertise even meetings. Further, you need to have people check into your event. So there's no physical check-in process, so you have to utilize the attendance URL. This is created automatically when you create an event on Get Involved. The image on the bottom shows what it looks like on your screen. Copy the link and pop it, on the chat, pop it in the chat in order to have individuals check in. So you just copy this, and then once you copy it, you can copy and paste it into your um, platform chat. Also, if you're having trouble using this site, there's a Get Involved help page, which has multiple tutorials, videos, information, and more to assist you. Okay, so it is event time. So now what do you do? Even if you wanna give people a few minutes, be sure you start on time. Um, this will allow people to actually maybe mingle beforehand. You can add music um, or even answer a question and have, have people answer a question in the chat, asking them what their favorite food was, if they were on a deserted island, different questions like that. Once people are logged on and send, send out your attendance URL, you have to have people check into your event. All you have to do is copy and paste it from the Get Involved site. Then we recommend that you have some control, someone controlling the chat to answer questions other than the host. This allows someone to leave the group and focus on that while another person answers questions. Having someone answer questions and setting reminders in the chat helps the host communicate directly over video. It also allows the chat controller to handle individualized questions. This could be the person who sent the attendance URL to latecomers as well. You can private message them, thanking them for attending your event, and then ask them to check in. This will eliminate you bombarding the group chat with the link. When starting the event, be sure to provide clear instructions so that you, have pre that you prepared beforehand. This will help your participants navigate the event and activity. Do not assume people will just know what to do. Have instructions written out that you can share with the group when it is time. Okay, the event is over. Now what? First, review who attended the event by using Get Involved. You can download the data on your own records and review who's, who's a student not in your organization currently versus those who are. After reviewing this information, reach out to those who attended. Thank them for attending, provide follow-up information, social media platforms to follow, and mention any future events and meetings you may have. For those who've, who attended your event from your group, ask them for feedback about the event, send a survey, or just gauge them in the group chat. Feedback will help you have future events that are even more successful. Similar to the meetings, meet with your executive team afterward to go over how things went. Discuss the good and bad, and think of ways to make your event successful for the next time, too. Okay, virtual event success, congratulations. We hope all these tips have been helpful. So here are some additional resources that I mentioned throughout the presentation. The Student Involvement Toolkit, which is listed here and was also sent out in the listserv to all student leaders. The virtual platform information at IT's website is listed there. And the Get Involved Help Portal is the one that's listed there. So if you have any further questions, you can refer to these sites. So we would have done a breakout room if we were all together on a call, um, but this is a great way, like we said, to keep your members engaged and to kind of give them different activities that are more intimate in conversation so there's not a pressure to talk just at the general board meeting. These are some future leaderships that are coming up. So the successful virtual marketing and social media strategies will be uploaded on YouTube soon since those meetings have passed. Uh, virtual team dynamics have also completed, so that will be up on YouTube soon. And then the ones coming up soonest are building inclusive communities, 
virtual wellness strategies, and then we will have a crowdfunding 101 for fundraising groups and a swag portal demo that will also be mentioned soon too. So check out the listservs and they will be all posted there. And currently all leader shops are posted on Get Involved on the student involvement portal. If you have any questions, we would have done a poll everywhere for people to upload anonymous questions so that everyone can see. If you do have more questions though about something that was mentioned today, email osi at echo.ruckers.edu. We really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video and to learn more about having successful events and meetings, virtual ones anyway. So we hope this was all helpful to you and please let us know if you have any questions. Thank you.